Hello and welcome to today's webinar on automating our HR processes. I'm Olivia Bush, CMO at Flow Forma, and I would like to thank you for taking the time to join us today. Before we get started, I would just like to take care of some housekeeping and offer a few pointers for viewing the webinar. Just to point out that today's webinar is being recorded. If you have trouble logging into audio or any other issues during the webinar, you can email info at flowforma.com for assistance. Throughout the webinar, your lines will be muted, but you can use the Q&A function on your right-hand side to ask questions, which we'll answer during the Q&A session at the end. After the webinar, we will send a copy of the recording to everyone and follow up on any unanswered questions. And now, I want to introduce our speakers today. We have Jacinta Hennessy, Chief Product Strategist at Hubbub, and Paul Stone, Solutions Architect at Flowforma. Jacinta and Paul will discuss how best to automate your HR processes, ultimately saving time and reducing costs. They will show you some short solution demos um, at the end, and I'll now hand over to Jacinta to get started. Welcome everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Jacinta Hennessy. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the time zones that are joining us today. I'll just share a little bit with you about Hubbub. Hubbub is a full-featured uh, HRAS and talent management suite. We're designed for ease of use and maximum configurability. To that end, we have full feature configuration built into the system. We're an enterprise class solution, but at the right price. We believe in driving down the unnecessary waste and spending and passing the savings back to our clients. Typically, we would work with mid-size organizations. We also do work with some small size organizations, and often our customers will span countries, cultures, and languages. Uh, we have easy API, API connectivity to other systems. A lot of our customers will have integrations with their payrolls, in some cases ERPs, in some cases benefits providers. We differentiate ourselves with personalized and highly attentive service and we are built within the Microsoft stack we're a Microsoft partner we have integrations with office 365 Active Directory we use cloud uh, Microsoft Cloud Azure for hosting hi I'm Paul and I'm here to talk about Performa BPM we're a leading business process management tool for office 365 we're unusual because we have many different aspects of the product in one tool so we capture data through forms, uh, execute tasks through workflows, and also deal with document generation. So building out documents based on the data that you're capturing during that workflow. And we're designed for ease of use. And that's ease of use not just from an end user perspective, but also from a configuration perspective. We're what's called a no-code tool. And in other words, you can construct workflows using no-code. Um, and because of that, we're seen as revolutionizing the traditional VPN world, which is often a very complex um, uh, beast where you have to, uh, it takes a great deal of time to learn how to use and configure VPN tools. We have additionally uh, some mobile client apps, and we're getting noticed by winning some awards. And of course, we partnered with Hubbub to offer you a complete uh, HR solution. And I'm now going to pass it back to Jacinta, who talked about, talked to you about six reasons to automate HR processes. And now as we look at uh, automating HR processes, what we're looking at first is the main reason is to reduce time spent on administrative activities. So when we think about administrative activities, what we need to think about is what are all the requests that HR might receive in a typical day? They might receive requests for information. They might receive requests for forms. They might receive requests for employees asking for time off or to understand the vacation entitlement or the sick day policy or various different things like that. So what we're looking at doing is we're looking at putting that control in the hands of the employee, in the hands of the user community, including the managers. So technology in this case brings the speed to the HR manager and employee experience. Speed, of course, enables productivity gains and efficiency goes hand in hand with speed. If you can imagine taking a lot of these simple um, and often repetitive and routine tasks off your plate, you're of course freed up as an HR practitioner to work on those projects and strategic initiatives that you really enjoy. So we're looking at streamlining the routine and repetitive administrative tasks. That's really the focus of today's webinar, reducing that time spent on the administrative tasks. And as a wonderful byproduct, we're looking at increasing the happiness of both the employee and the HR practitioners because we're not spending so much time chasing down paperwork and chasing down requests and various things like that. 
So the next step we're looking at is productivity gain. So what does that look like for us? If we have greater speed in delivering to our user community, then we also have greater efficiency and everybody becomes more productive. So if you can imagine that we're looking at a lot of the typical uh, routine tasks that you would do. So let's think about a few of those. What if you didn't have to remember about upcoming contract expiry dates? What if the system would automatically remind you that Joe Smith's contract is going to end on August 1st and the system will send you a notification well in advance of that date so you can take the necessary actions? What if the system automatically reminded you of probationary end dates, visa expiry dates, a lot of these type of dates that can be a little bit difficult to manage and oftentimes you have to manage them in some type of bring forward file or, or, or manual process or something like that. On a similar note, what if you didn't have to search for offer letters and other employee documents? What if when a senior stakeholder comes into an HR's office and they said, look, uh, we're looking for an offer letter for someone or we want to make sure we have executive contracts on file for all of the executives, you didn't have to think about it. You could simply go to the system and find, and find the documents that you're looking for. And in terms of the employee experience, what if the employee could easily find policies, procedures, handbooks, different types of things, documents that they may need? They didn't have to go to HR, they didn't have to ask their manager that these things were automated. And then finally, and one of the processes we're going to look at today, and Paul's going to kindly take us through it, is what if we could automate processes such as a new hire process? So if we knew that we had an employee starting, say, next week or in two weeks, we could automatically send notifications to office services to have you know, their desk set up. We could send notifications to IT to give them the appropriate access and uh, uh, you know, login credentials and so forth. We could send notifications to security to ensure they have the necessary security card and indeed even to training to make sure that they have whatever training might be required before they start the job. So what we're looking at here is let the system do the work for you. By automating the HR tasks and processes, you also now have the added benefit of having insight and ability to measure them. And what do we mean by that? If we can, if we can see and look into the HR tasks and processes, we can see how long those HR tasks and processes are actually taking because what gets measured, as we know, actually gets managed. So if we can say, look, we're starting a new hire process, we've sent out the, the process to our various different stakeholders, and we sent that process out on July 1st, um, and we go in and look at the process on July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, we can see exactly, with pinpoint precision, where that process is, who has completed their steps, who has not completed their steps, and if there are certain individuals that maybe need a little bit more information or a little bit more help, we can focus on helping those individuals through the process. And then the number three step is improved accuracy and compliance. And I particularly like this graphic because I think as HR practitioners, we've all been there, completely buried in paperwork and wondering how we're going to find our way out of that. So what we're looking at, if the system truly has what we call quote unquote user centric design, meaning that it is designed to be as intuitive as possible, then you're going to get what we call higher user adoption. So when we're talking about higher user adoption, we're looking at how can we get the ma maximum amount of people using the system, whether that be HR practitioners, managers, supervisors, superintendents, employees, and so forth. Because the more people you have using the system, you will have improved data accuracy. Now why will you have improved data accuracy? Because if employees and managers are able to go in and keep certain aspects of their HRS records up to date, of course you always retain control over what they can update you're going to have more correct data. An example would be, I think we've all been there when we have initially set up a system, we're very excited, we have this wonderful brand new HRIS, the data has been uploaded, everything's great. But about a month or two or three or four later, inevitably somebody's data has changed. And if it's personal data, such as maybe an address or perhaps marital status, or maybe an employee has had a child or some type of life event, we're not always notified of those changes. And there isn't always a process in place, or at least a streamlined and effective process in place to let us know of the, these changes. So if we are providing, especially employees with access to our system, the one thing we want to make sure of is that their data is accurate. So imagine if we can give employees within certain constraints, of course, the, the correct access to either view 
or update or at least have input on their data, then you're going to have much a much higher uh, level of data accuracy. A higher level of data accuracy is going to improve the credibility of HR. I remember back in the day, uh, I remember at one point my executive VP of HR came to me and said, Jacinta, you know, how many employees do we have globally? And I said, well, wait a minute, that should be easy. At the time, I was working for a company with about 14,000 employees. And I thought, well, that should be quite easy. We can just pull that out of our system, right? I had no idea that our system data was not accurate. So right there is an example of having accurate data in the system and helping the credibility of HR. So when we have requests from stakeholders, we can uh, take note and know that our data is correct. And by engaging the end user in the data, uh, we have a better chance of having that correct. And through automation, we have a chance of doing that. So let's think about it. What if there was a better way to keep our records up to date? What if we could have our user community actively engaged in owning their data? And what if, as HR practitioners, we could retain the oversight of the data and retain history of all the changes? So we do not have to worry about changes happening to the database without our knowledge or without our approval. Again, we are looking at HR retaining oversight for compliance and audit purposes. So step four or is we're looking at better insight and decision making. So what does that actually look like? If we look at better insight and decision making, we're looking at improved data accuracy as we talked about in slide number three. Better insight and decision making is going to come directly from improved data accuracy because we can trust the data that is in our system. How do we trust that data and how do we make sure the system is as user friendly as possible? We're looking at some key points such as visibility, integration, localization, and configuration. When we look at these various different areas, we're talking about, from a hubbub perspective, we're talking about business process configuration. So essentially what that means is that is the ability, and I'll be showing you in just a few minutes, of really personalizing and localizing the system. So if you have naming conventions, if you have certain terminology that you are used to using internally in your company, in your location, and so forth, let's update the system to have it reflect that so that when users go into the system, it's very familiar to them. They do not have to sort of do this mental translation in their mind of what the various terms mean. Furthermore, in Hubbub, you can actually design your performance plans, compensation plans, and succession plans to fit your specific business requirements. If we look at the workflow side of things, and Paul will definitely speak more to this, the workflow is tremendous because you can also adapt and modify forms, workflows, and processes to fit your specific business needs. And when we look at an integrated and automatic, automated HR, we're talking about being able to rely on the data so we can make decisions right the first time with greater speed and accuracy. One of the things we don't want to do is we don't want to be looking in our system and think, oh great, this is a wonderful system, everybody's put a lot of time and energy into putting this system in place and populating it, but we can't trust the data that's in there. We need to have a level of confidence in our data so that we can literally pull out the reports, pull out the charts, pull out the queries that we need to so it can, we can rely on them to make our business decisions. As we move over to slide five, what we're looking at is we're looking at employee engagement gains. You probably noticed the little graphic over on the right-hand side. That we consider to be a happy employee. And why is the employee happy? Because if we collectively have greater productivity, and specifically the employee feels more productive, they're going to have a better employee experience, and therefore the net benefit of that is increased employee engagement. There's nothing quite like an employee arriving on the first day and not quite knowing what to do. Maybe their desk isn't set up, maybe they don't have access, they're not quite sure exactly what's going on. Now let's imagine the converse. Let's imagine that we're a new employee, we're excited to start our job, and on our first day, everything is ready and set up for us to start working productively. Before we start, HR has sent us all the necessary forms, we've reviewed the policies, and perhaps even completed some initial training courses. And on the first day, our computer is set up with all the programs we need, the forms, our workstation is ready, and we can literally dive into our new job. So when we look at that, what we're really talking about is providing a personalized, effective, and efficient experience to that new employee. And that can be done through utilizing technology and processes. If we, could, if we provide employees with a more efficient and personalized experience, they're happier, they feel more equipped, it's, it's as if we're setting them up for success. 
and that in turn increases employee satisfaction, which increases retention. And at the end of the day, uh, we really want employees to be as happy as possible. We want them to be great champions for our companies, for our business, and we want to, of course, have them enjoy their experience while they're working with us. When we look at employees that have a higher level of satisfaction, they're happy, they're more productive, and as mentioned, they are less likely to leave your company. And finally, when we look at step six, what we're really talking about is we're talking about how do those organizational improvements lead to cost savings. So if we have a better employee experience and increased employee engagement, happy employees are therefore more productive. So what we're looking at is using technology to improve the employee's experience. There have actually been studies done, and there is a link on here to a fast company study, that has actually demonstrated that by reducing, by increasing the employee experience and their level of satisfaction, it actually reduces attrition, and if you can believe it, it actually can increase employee productivity by 12%. I found that to be really interesting, and it's a very interesting article if you'd like to have a read of it after today's meeting. Um, other studies have shown that a more, more efficient and personalized service drives employee satisfaction and increases retention. And again, what do we need to have a more efficient and personalized experience? We need automated HR. We need automated tools. We need automated processes. And we need the ability to localize and configure the systems to really reflect uh, what ex the experience that we'd like to provide to employee. Autom automating HR also streamlines the processes and, and helps us with routine and repetitive administrative tasks. And as I mentioned at the outset, allowing HR more time for strategic priorities, which is always, uh, HR is always looking for the ability to do that. And of course, technology also drives business transformation. We're enabling processes to be performed in a faster, more effective, more efficient manner. And at the end of the day, as an HR community, we want to be able to deliver more competitive, productive and successful results to the business. So if we look at, okay, all of, these, all of these thoughts are wonderful thoughts, but how do we go about actually delivering these to the business? How do we actually uh, uh, execute on these and actually make them happen? Well, what we're looking at uh, in the short demos that we're going to be sharing in just a moment is we're actually looking at the processes. There's a little bit of a delay here. Oh, there's the links. You'll be able to see those there. When we look at the flow format and hubbub workflows, we've got a few sample workflows. You can have as many different HR-related workflows as you would like. So what we're talking about today and what Paul will be taking us through is the new hire process and how that new hire process actually splits out into the various different stakeholder categories to ensure that everybody's getting the notifications they require. Other uh, sample HR workflows uh, would be employee life change. So that would be the ability, for example, as we talked about earlier, the employee to be able to notify the company of changes to marital status, address, phone number, contact information, anything along those lines. Salary change requests, that would typically be within the domain of the manager. So if a manager, for example, thought that outside of the normal uh, compensation cycle and process, maybe an employee was, uh, uh, was due to get some type of salary change or maybe a change in job level or pay grade or role or something to that effect, they could certainly request that in an automated fashion and it can go through the various approval chains. Employee transfer, so if we're moving employees around, how do we get them from one location to another and notify the previous manager and the new manager? And that is often uh, a process that often has gaps in a lot of companies. And then we're looking at termination, exit interviews, and so forth. So gathering that intelligence before the employee leaves the company so we have an understanding of maybe if there's a level of dissatisfaction or a level of perhaps feeling stagnant or whatever that reason that the employee may be leaving. Of course, the termination workflow is like a reverse of the new hire process, making sure the various stakeholders are notified. Payroll benefits change, of course, uh, being able to process those over to our colleagues in payroll, and uh, employee-facing time off and leave requests. And then finally, before I hand it over to Paul, uh, just an example of the new hire process, just to show you what it looks like before Paul actually walks us through it. So this would be an example of the ability to notify all stakeholders, HR, IT, security, office services, whoever those various different stakeholders are with various different actions. So if we were to look at this particular process, HR, for example, could be the one that initiates this new hire flow, so they know they have a new hire starting on a particular date. It can launch concurrent processes 
processes that will go through HR that will then send off various different forms to the individual. The employee can then submit the forms back. This can all happen, this can all happen through the workflow, and the forms will automatically update the employee record in Hubbub, so there's no manual entry required. And then concurrently, we can have the IT process going to make sure that the IT uh, uh, um, stakeholders have the system access set up, have the various different software programs loaded, have a computer provided to the individual, and they can then notify the manager, HR, whoever the stakeholders are, to ensure that everything's set up. And then concurrently, if we're looking at security office services, same type of thing. And again, this can be used for anything. It can be uh, sent to a medical staff to make sure that new hire medicals have been completed, or maybe to an on-site nurse or doctor to make sure various different tests have been completed. It could be used for safety inductions, training, any of those various different processes that we would like to include. And now we are going to pop over into the Hubbub demo, which will be followed by Paul providing a wonderful demo of a sample process in flow format. You should be able to see my screen momentarily. So what we're looking at here is we're actually looking at the Hubbub system right now. So when we look at the Hubbub system, um, across the top, uh, sorry, right across here, you will see various different tiles. Those tiles are actually the Flowforma business processes, the ones that we just showed in the PowerPoint slide. They're completely embedded within the Hubbub system to allow that user community to have a stream, streamlined and uh, seamless experience. This would be an example of a Hubbub dashboard. There are many, many different ways that the dashboard can be configured. And of course, it depends on the user community for for that dashboard. So if the dashboard is directed at an employee, it will have certain attributes that would be relevant to an employee, and it would not include things such as employee by division. That would be more for perhaps managers, senior stakeholders, uh, HR practitioners, for example. But you may wish, for example, if it was an employee having access uh, to the system, you may allow them to have a contact directory. You may push out messages, such as over here, welcome to your talent management system. You may include uh, chat logs where they can talk about upcoming events at the companies. You may include, we've seen some customers include uh, notifications of birthdays or work anniversaries or various different things like this. So you really have a lot of uh, uh, discretion as to how you would like to set this up. I'll show you just another couple examples of uh, dashboards just to show you uh, what it can look like. Here would be another example of a dashboard. In this one, what we're doing is we're including links to company program providers. So it could be links to your employee assistance programs, to other types of carriers, to preferred airlines that you like to deal with, different things like that. And here would be another example of the dashboard here. Let me just scroll up. There, there would be another example of the dashboard where we're using more of the white space for some type of company picture. It could be a logo, it could be a picture of an operation or site, something like that. And then in the middle here, you'll see a little chat log and so forth. So there's various different ways that can be done. Um, just a short uh, uh, introduction to the Hubbub system. Across the blue bar at the top, you'll see various different modules. So talent is Hubbub's HRS. That's our employee master record, and we'll be touching on that briefly today. Uh, within the employee master record, we've got the ability to import, export data. So when you're actually getting the system set up, it's a very, very short time to get it set up because if you have the data in electronic format, such as a CSV file or Excel, that data is essentially mapped. Uh, to the system and uploaded in a template that is provided or extracted directly from the system. And that template is intelligent. It includes your pick list values. Uh, it'll track effective dates on history changes, all sorts of good stuff like that. We also have notification functionality, which I'll be touching on as well. The second module that Hubbub provides is the performance module. So performance is everything performance management related. It's everything from setting up goals or objectives at every level of the company. Set them up at the corporate or organizational level, business unit level, department level, whatever those various different uh, levels in your organization look like, right through to the individual contributor or the employee level. And of course, you can have cascading, alignment, reporting, all of those things that you would expect. Um, one interesting takeaway uh, for Hubbub but because we work with a lot of companies that are operating in different jurisdictions, it's very important for us, back to the PowerPoint presentation that we were talking about, the ability to localize. So if you find in your organization that you have maybe a slightly different performance plan for one group and another slightly different design for another group. An example might be, say, for an executive group, you might include career development questions. Maybe for a technical group, you may include more of 
of an ad hoc agile performance log, things like that. So you can really design the plans for your different user communities. We also include compensation. Same thing with performance. You have complete autonomy as to how you want to design your compensation plans. Of course, the system comes delivered with a number of default plans, and you can absolutely use those, or you can completely design your own, or you can modify those that are in the system. And the reason for that, different groupings in your organization, some may have merit increases, some may have market increases, some may be eligible for short-term incentive or long-term incentive, and perhaps other users are not. So you can completely control what that looks like right through to the workflow and who needs to approve the various compensation changes. We have compliance, so that's really around tracking uh, disciplinary events, uh, events and grievances. Um, we've also got a learning module that is not shown in this particular site, and that's around tracking uh, learning administration and ensuring that you can set up uh, learning activities and catalogs and provide people with access and visibility into those. We've got succession, which is what you would expect. It's pulling data in from a lot of the other modules in a fully integrated fashion and allowing you to put on top of that a lot of your strategic criteria around risk and retention and potential reasons for leaving and look, looking at some of those uh, leading indicators. Analytics is just basically lots and lots of fun charts to look at, settings is configuration and security. I'm just going to jump in to show you, so this would be an example of a talent profile. There are different ways that this can be designed. If we look at this talent profile, this is an example of one with uh, the left hand pane with the picture down the side and some key information. For today's demo, I just have a, a straight ahead demo. One of the first things I should mention is across the top, you can secure the modules individually. So Hubbub is a very scalable and you can select the modules that are relevant for you and then you can add modules at a later date, whatever makes the most sense for your business needs. So the first thing you can do is you can secure the modules separately. The next thing you can do is you can secure the records that the uh, user communities are going to see. So if I was logging in as an HR practitioner at corporate, I might see all the records. If I'm logging in as an HR practitioner at a particular business unit or location, I might just see the records at that location. If I'm logging in as a manager, I might see my direct reports and in some cases my indirect reports. And as an employee, I might see my own record and even then only certain aspects of my own record. So that's the next level of security. Everything is see in the system is configurable. So even if we look at the columns that are displaying here, they're completely configurable for you. You can decide what columns you'd like to display, how you'd like to filter, how you'd like to sort, what is most meaningful for you. I'm just going to jump into a record to just highlight some. What I'd really like to do is just underscore what we talked about in the PowerPoint, and that is how do we localize, how do we configure, how do we personalize to give the user communities the best possible experience? And that's really the focus of today's uh, demo. So if we look at the various different pages within the talent profile, we'll notice that it is divided up in a page format. So the next level is being able to secure the pages individually. So if I had perhaps a compensation analyst that were working with me and all they needed to see was compensation, but they should not see any personal information, they'd only see that page, they wouldn't even know the other pages exist. The next level is I can secure individual fields, and this can actually be done right down to the user role. So say, for example, if I say, look, my user community doesn't need to see employee number, it's just not relevant to them, I hide that field completely, they don't even know it's there. So that's the next level of security. Now think about the power that that gives you. So if you wanted to open up the system maybe to managers, but there was data that was sensitive, so sensitive data would often be considered date of birth. Uh, sensitive data might also be tax ID, whether it be social security number, social insurance number, um, ethnicity, EEO reporting, uh, tracking of various different cultural uh, affiliations or indigenous groupings. Often that, that type of data can be considered quite sensitive. It's absolutely necessary to track, absolutely, for a number of different legislative and, and regulatory reasons, but we wouldn't necessarily want everybody who has access to the system seeing that data. So you have the power to actually control who sees what field. So you can have them from an oversight perspective uh, as an HR practitioner, but you can absolutely restrict them down to the user perspective. Um, other things, again, to localize, personalize, and make the experience more meaningful. If I click to the left of any field within Talent Track HRS, I can absolutely localize this. So I can say, look, I don't want to call it employee number, I want to call it EE. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't really like that uh, acronym that I use, but it's nice and short. So so employee ID. So I hit save and you'll notice the field is automatically updated. There you go, EEID. 
And if you notice when we were in there, I can do that in multiple languages. So if I have it deployed in French and if I have it deployed in Spanish, I can make those changes in multiple languages. And for a lot of our, uh, particularly our Canadian customers, oftentimes they are working in English and French. Um, a lot of our global customers are working in Spanish. We even have customers working in other languages as well, which it gets quite interesting because some of the field names get, uh, get rather long. A couple other takeaways, again, really focusing on uh, configuration and localization. So not only can I rename the field, so let's make it really, really similar to what your uh, user experience uh, needs to see so that the naming convention is very familiar for them. I can also make fields required or mandatory. Quite straightforward, a lot of systems do offer this, but with our system, all of these configuration changes can be made at any time. You're not restricted to setting it up once and then not having the uh, latitude to ch make changes at a later date. So um, the reason you would want to make fields sometimes required or mandatory is to, again, back to that data consistency, data integrity. There might be a key set of fields that you really need for stakeholder reporting, and so you absolutely need to make sure that those fields are always populated with data. Now, a couple takeaways in terms of how the system can get populated with data. As mentioned, we have full data import capability, so that that data, if it's in electronic format, can certainly be imported into the system. And that's not only for the first time upload, that's any time you want to make a mass change to the system. So if you had, for example, some type of reorganization or mass salary changes you'd like to make, you can absolutely use the import tool for that. You can also, of course, make manual changes as you would expect, but you can also make changes through API integration. So if those changes were to come over from your uh, talent acquisition pro, uh, system or from your payroll system or other systems, um, it will also uh, require that data to be intact to keep the data integrity for your required and mandatory fields. You'll notice to the right of some of the fields, there's a little icon that looks like a clock. When I hover on that, it says click to view field history. So if I click on that right there, um, you'll see that our history tracking is actually, it, it's quite robust and uh, we quite enjoy uh, showing our history tracking. And the reason for that is, you can enable history on any field that you would like. Um, when you are enabling history, it's automatically, as you would expect, it's going to track who has edited the history. It's also always going to track the modified date because you need good audit and compliance records. It'll show the new value and of course you can select whatever change reason you like. Important takeaway though is with our effective dates, you can select future effective dates. So if I wanted to enter data into the system but it didn't take effect until let's say August 1st, maybe some salary changes or job changes or something like that, I can enter it into the system, put a threshold date of August 1st, that data will not be updated in the system until that threshold date has been reached. You'll also notice delete and restore. If I'm working in history and I notice that there are erroneous records there, I can actually clean it up and if I've made a mistake and deleted something inadvertently, I can restore it. Again, back to the localization, if I'm working in the system and I notice, look, I'm working in this division pick list and I notice there's a pick list value that is not there, I can simply click on the right hand side there where it's a little list icon, and I can go in and I can actually see my pick list, I can make the changes, I can either edit it or I can change it in multiple languages, I can change the order of it, end date it, effective date it, and so forth. We do support matrixed uh, 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 situations, so if you have co-managers, dotted line managers, shared managers, rotational managers, we absolutely do support that. Just one other takeaway that I mentioned at the outset, the date notifications. So these are consistent throughout the system, Wherever you see a date field, so let's say, for example, the contract end date field. So this goes back to our slide about reducing the administrative overhead and the tasks and having the system proactively work for you. If I'm to look at the contract end date and I say, look, so let's pretend this is, a, um, let's say, August 30th, 2017, and this individual's contract is coming up for expiry, but I want the system to proactively notify me. I simply go up to talent, down to notifications. When I go in here, I'm going to see my notifications page. I click on contract end date. You'll see on the right hand side, I'm getting my notification schedule. I can decide exactly how often I'd like to be notified prior to the date and then the frequency with which I'd like to be notified. Who's going to be notified? The manager, employee, somebody completely different. And I can actually edit the message that is going to go out and the email that's going to go out. And this is for all date fields across Talent Track HRS. So imagine this can be used for visas and exp visa expiry dates, passport expiry dates, upcoming training expiry dates. Maybe somebody has a first aid course and it's only 
valid for a year, and you need to remind yourself that it's upcoming. Um, some, of course, uh, dates require a lot of advance notice. If it is, say, a work permit or uh, some type of visa like that, sometimes they can require months of paperwork uh, to get those particular uh, pieces of, of paper updated. So having that proactive notification can be very, very helpful. And if we just go back to talent, very quickly I'll just share. So we've got lots of personal fields that are available, compensation fields. We support full salary banding. Um, you can have effective dated salary bands. You could have as many different salary bands as you like. We support multiple currencies. We have exchange rate tables that can be included as well. Uh, international relocation. We support um, even tracking secondments, assignments, all sorts of things like that, transfers, movements around the company. As I mentioned, visas and permits. Expertise and qualifications. So that's everything around um, education, all the resume type data that you would expect. If we're working with an ATS, vendor. Uh, we also we have a partner, ISIMS, that we have standard integration with. But if we are working with an ATS vendor, all that data will come over naturally for you from the ATS. Um, probably the area we see our clients use most in there would be training and certifications, so the ability to track that information. Photographs and, of course, documents. So very important, the ability to attach a document to a record. And the types of documents can actually be secured individually. So you can provide access as you so choose for those more sensitive documents. You may, you may uh, uh, secure them. Uh, more restrictively and for documents that are more available to others you may allow them to be open and again as we work through the workflow with Paul you'll see that you can actually generate documents as part of the workflow and then those documents can then come back automatically and be attached to the record and just as I wrap up here just to show something a little bit fun I'll just show you what it looks like you can do all sorts of fun things out of the system including queries and org charts and all sorts of interesting things just going to show you an example of an org chart this is generated directly from within the system. I'll just pull up some pictures so it's a bit more fun looking. And this is pulling directly from your data. So as we know, oftentimes with org charts, the minute we create these beautiful org charts in PowerPoint or an org chart program, inevitably they're sort of out of date. The minute we create them, when we're creating for the system, they're pulling in live data. If I notice the data is incorrect, I can actually drill down on the org chart, org chart box, make the chains, refresh it, and the data will be updated. You can change the look and feel, you can change the color, you can change the fields, and so on and so forth that show up on the org chart. So that's just a very high level view. Again, the focus of today's demo was not to show all functionality in the system, but to simply give you an idea of how you can reduce the administrative tasks, how you can streamline, how you can automate, and how you can make a system work proactively for you. And now to share a little bit about more about the uh, uh, workflow itself, I'd like to pass it over to my colleague, uh, Paul Stone, over at Flowforma. Hi, everybody. So I'd like to talk to you about the Flowforma aspect of the system. A Flowforma is basically a workflow processing tool that allows you to capture information through dynamic forms and pass an information from one person to another in the organization and so that it can be reviewed, uh, appended to, and approved. And what I'd like to do is just exit out of this um, presentation and show you an actual live demonstration. So we're now looking at the uh, Homebook dashboard that Jacinta showed you earlier on. And as you can see, um, forms so our processes can be launched by clicking on the various icons available, and they will kick off processes to capture relevant information in a controlled manner and pass the information to from one person to the next. Now, the focus on my demo today is going to be on the new hire process. Um, so what we'll do is kick off the new hire process. In fact, I've kicked one off already, so I'm just going to tab over here and show you that. And here we have a full form of form. Now, the full form of form contains various components. The key piece is at the very top, have a thing called a workflow. Now this workflow is showing you a series of steps that are executed in sequence that bring you to achieve an ultimate outcome, in this case, to record a new hire in the system. And um, we're on the very first step at the moment, which is new hire details. And the area below that shows you all the relevant fields that are required to set up a new hire. So these fields you may have noticed actually uh, correspond to the fields that just showed you in the uh, the talent program. So here we're talking about the, the same fields but being captured instead of on a static screen, on a dynamic screen that's part of a process. So in other words, when we touch the, the new hard details on these fields here, they'll be passed to an employee manager for review and then ultimately go to HR, IT and security so that the employee new part can be incorporated into the business and set up on the appropriate systems, etc. And we're now going to show you a demonstration of that process. 
So um, what we'll do is to, uh, first of all, I've pre-entered in some of the details here, only to save time, as I've only got a short uh, time to demo the system to you. Um, so I've entered in the, the name and so on. And down here, I'm going to show you the data and make sure the system. So I'm going to select a department, and the department is automatically picked up from a list of departments in Hubble. And when I select operations, it automatically retrieves the manager of the operations uh, department and populates that into the form. And this ability to automatically retrieve information from the back end and populate it into the form greatly increases the accuracy of the information that's being captured. The system can also display help text, etc., uh, to guide the user as to how to enter the data and, and instruct the user as to what to do next. So basically, we're providing a very intuitive end user interface that is focused on the actual um, person who is logged into the system right now and uh, is displaying the information that they need to know and only the information that needs to be captured. And um, any information that's mandatory, by the way, it can be set as mandatory and automatically uh, enforced, that mandatory nature can be enforced as you enter in data. And as you enter in data, as you can see, the system uh, dynamically displays information and retrieves information from the back end, etc. So the whole system is dynamic and everything is focused on the current user that's logged in right now as to what they can see. All of these steps in the workflow are normally assigned to different people. So the employee manager would be assigned to the employee manager step and only they could go in and complete that step. And similarly, the IT step would be assigned to the IT department. And steps in the process can be assigned to individuals or to groups. And, and when the assigned person logs in, they see their step and can enter in information that nobody else can. So I'm now going to submit this first step and we'll move on to the next step in the process. So down here I have a submit button. And when I press submit, it moves on to the employee manager review. Now for the purposes of the demo, I've set myself up to be the manager and the IT department and the security department as well, so that I can easily show you the whole workflow. But under normal circumstances, only the employee manager could actually go in and accept or reject. And hey, what are they accepting or rejecting? Well, to see what I'm accepting or rejecting, I just click on the previous step, and I can see what the employee or HR would have entered here. So I can see all these details, verify that they're okay, and then I can accept or reject. And you notice that I can't edit these details. And the reason is that these were captured earlier on in the process and they were entered by somebody else. So I don't have the rights to go in and edit somebody else's data. So, but I can accept or reject it. So I could say no and pass it back automatically. And here's the reason why I rejected, etc. cetera. Um, and that will automatically loop back into new hard details and send an email to the person who entered the details saying, hey, you know, the manager rejected it. Here's the reason why. And they can go in and amend it. Now, in this particular case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to accept. And um, just for the purposes of the demonstration, I want to move the workflow on. So when I accept and press submit, it moves on to the next set of processes. Now, you'll notice that we've been moving on one step at a time. But when we get to this pro uh, step in the process, uh, it's actually called a parallel step, meaning that HR can organize a sign-off of documentation. IT can also sort out preparation and security can set up security access, all in parallel. So at each point here, um, the relevant resource will be sent an email. So HR, you have to get some sign-off documentation. IT, you have to set this user up in the system. And security, you have to set them up at a door pass. Um, so they all receive email communications. And in, in the email communication, there'll be a link. They click on the link, and they come straight into the form in the browser. Now, the types of data that can be captured in the flow form are very varied. So, for example, you can upload documents as answers to questions. Please attach the employee contract. I can upload a copy of a scanned copy of a signed contract. I can also upload, in this case, a health declaration. These documents that you, that you upload are saved in SharePoint and automatically incorporated into Hubble. In this case, I've got to enter a meeting induction date. And as you can see, it's mandatory, so I have to submit this one. Let me go for the 27th at, let's say, um, 9 o'clock. Yeah. So, um, in meanwhile, uh, IT will enter the information into their step. Now, notice that each of these steps, I'm the assigned resource. Normally, only IT will be going in and sending up the IT information. Now, for convenience, I've actually copied across some of the information from the new hard details um, in here so that the IT people can see exactly what they need to see in order to set the new user up. And when they set up the user, they can enter in the user details here, and they can indicate when the account will be activated, and also record all the equipment that they're issuing out to the employee. So you might enter in some laptop details here, 
the asset tag of the laptop and when it's expected to be delivered to the uh, manager of the new employee. It can also indicate if installation is required or not. The key point here is that the system can capture information in tabular detail um, and you can add equipment items as many as you like. And similar in this case, you can also add in applications where you're providing access to various system applications and um, you will record various details in there. At this point, I'd just like to mention that there's some additional buttons, buttons at the bottom of the screen. A key one here is delegate. So if you were passed um, something for approval or for document sign-off, let's say, and you weren't available at the time to, to carry out that task, you could delegate the task to somebody else. And um, they will be able to go in and, and fill that in. Every time you delegate, every time you fill in, every time you submit, a record is stamped in the audit log. So all the activity on the system is recorded in the audit log. And incidentally, it also records the times that that takes. So when IT finish their work and they press submit, uh, a timestamp is recorded in the, in the system so that you can see when the, the, they were allocated the task and when they completed the task. And you can compare that to standard benchmarks. So you can actually see how resources are performing. Also, their username is stamped on the record as well. So you can, you can also see particular performance of individual users if you want to. Um, so when all these, if these steps are completed, um, you can move on to the final step in the process, which is to prepare a welcome pack. Now in this case, the system is going to automatically generate a document based on the information that was captured previously. So here we captured new details. All of this may have taken some time. It may have taken a week, it may have taken two weeks. Um, but at this particular step uh, and prepare a welcome pack, you see this is an attachment that's automatically generated by the system. It's a PDF, and when I open that PDF, here you'll see a, a welcome letter um, that can be sent out to the uh, employee. So it's, it's not it's recognized that, I've, uh, that the person is, the employee is called Paul, and my manager is going to be Patrick McCoy, um, and so on. So it's basically captured all that information and I passed that onto the, uh, into the generated document. And this generated document can be emailed out automatically by the system, or it can be uh, copied to your local hard drive and you can structure your own email. Um, so all of this information is stored in the system, system and uh, pushed into Hubbub. Um, but you might be interested to know that this is a very configurable system. It was designed really to be configured by process owners, by HR managers, by uh, responsible people in the business, not in IT. Um, so you can actually modify this system quite easily using our uh, modification tool. Let me just jump over to show you what that looks like. Here we have a series of steps in the workflow, um, and the workflow is built using a tool called Flow Designer. So here we have the new hard detail step, employee manager review, and then a parallel group where we have all the processes within the um, fulfillment part of the, of the process. So sign off documents, IT preparation, security access. And at the very end, we have the welcome pack. Each of these steps are constructed so that you can um, uh, capture data. So for example, in the new high details, we have a whole series of fields here, um, such as first name, and uh, these fields capture data. If I edit that, you'll see that it's a, a single line of text, which means a short text field, and here's some details about that particular field. If I would show you another one, um, something like, let me see, org, uh, organizational unit, and um, that's a local field, so it's actually looking up some data in the background. So this system basically um, allows you to configure steps and, and fields and data fields in the process very easily. And the key thing here is that you can uh, alter the workflow very easily as well. So for example, the employee manager review, if you wanted to move that to a different point in the workflow, let's say you want, to, want them to review the workflow after IT and so on have set up the systems. Well, then you can just drag that step down and the next time the workflow integrates in, uh, Next time the workflow executes, excuse me, um, you, you, this step will actually happen later in the process. So it's very easy to modify the workflow and even build your own new workflows as well. And all these workflows will be um, executed from, um, can be executed from a Hubbub dashboard. So you may have to just jump back there. Or they can be executed from your website. And they can also incidentally be executed from mobile devices. So these uh, all these workflows that you create, uh, the forms are, are immediately available on mobile via our mobile app, um, and you can basically work with these 
work with these processes um, while you're out and about using your iPhone or uh, Android uh, phone or an iPad, for example. Um, so the other thing to say is that all the processes, like I said, um, are the, the durations of all the tasks and all the processes themselves are captured. And we have some reporting built into the system that allows you to track um, the performance of your processes. So for example, here we have a new hire process. You can see I've entered seven of them into this test system. And if I click on that, you can see a breakdown of all the various steps in the workflow. And you can see that while the new hire details are some red, red in this, which is indicating that there's a couple of forms that were delayed specifically on the new hire detail step. And when I click on that red area, uh, the details of the forms themselves pop up below. And I can drill into these forms and actually look at ex and find the reasons why those particular processes were held at that particular point in the process. So this is basically identifying bottlenecks in your process. And, that, and because you're capturing all the information in a very controlled way, you can find out and investigate why those bottlenecks are occurring. And it might be a resource issue, or it might be that the workflow itself is not designed very well. In fact, there are two or three actors, maybe there's somebody externally involved, um, who's holding up um, the, your, your processes. And what Flowforma does is allow you to analyze all this information. Incidentally, there's also a reporting feed out of Flowforma. So all this information can be reported out via some tools like Power BI, um, which are very easy to configure and to show you uh, not just dashboard information like this performance information but all the detail that you're capturing in the forms as well can be included in those reports. At this point um, I'm going to pass you back to Olivia to uh, uh, take you for Q&A. Thank you Paul. Um, we have some time left now for questions and answers so if you've any questions for Jacinta or Paul please feel free to type them into the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. Um, with a few questions that have come in throughout the webinar. The first one, Jacinta, will be for you. Um, it says we have different compensation plans in Canada, UK and US offices. Can the system accommodate that? Yes, absolutely. So you can have as many different types of compensation plans as you wish. You can have as many different types of salary bands as you wish. So if you have a completely different way of doing compensation in one country as opposed to another country, or even one jurisdiction or one business unit as compared to another one, you can absolutely set that up. You can have different uh, components, different rules, different thresholds. So say, for example, if um, you allowed a, a market or a merit increase of, say, 2% in one jurisdiction but only 1% in another jurisdiction, you can absolutely support that. So you can have as many different designs as you would like. Okay, okay thanks. Um, another question is, can we build our own processes? Paul, I think that's one for you. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can build your own processes. Uh, or you can modify the existing ones. We provide a flexible interface into Hubbub so that you can map all the, the data that you're capturing in the forms into your Hubbub, um, Hubbub site. And uh, yeah, we totally promote that. And indeed, you're allowed to uh, modify the processes and it is designed for ease of use. So you've saw, seen yourself with the um, easy to use uh, flow designer tool that it's quite straightforward to build your own process. Okay, um, I'm just looking at some of the other questions we have. So one of them is, can you share a bit more about how you track history in the HRIS? Can it be audited and reported on? Jacinta, you're probably best placed to answer that one. Yeah, absolutely. So whatever fields that you have determined to track history on, history will be tracked on those fields. And as I, I think as I mentioned in the demo, um, however that data gets into Hubbub, the data will be tracked, uh, the history will be tracked on that field. So whether it's through an upload, through an integration, through manual entry, history will be tracked provided history is enabled on that field. And if, if you decide that at the beginning you want to track history on a lot of fields, but then you change your mind later on, you can disable history and vice versa. You can turn history on if you find you need it on more fields. There are a lot of history reports that are available. So you can report on hist all history for, say, one employee, all historical changes, or you can uh, report on changes on a particular field, but for multiple employees. So yes, history is a very uh, important part of the system, particularly when it comes to key data, such as salary information, compensation information, things like that. Those are typically the areas where you would most definitely want to track history. Okay, um, another question is, do I need any other technology to run Flowforma? Oh, that's probably for you. 
Yeah, no. Um, so Forma is basically a browser system, browser-based system, and you can. Um, but from an end-user perspective, you're just using a browser to access for Forma, and that includes configuration. So it's all done via the browser. You don't need to install anything locally on your um, on your hardware to to access the system. Okay, and another one is how do you access forms on mobile devices? Oh, that's a good one because uh, sorry, just in terms of access. Yeah, on mobile devices, you can use your mobile browsers, but we do actually provide apps um, for iOS and Android, and those apps give you the advantage of being able to access and complete forms offline, so you don't need to be connected to the uh, network. Um, so they do provide a very uh, friendly end user interface, and we would recommend that. Move. Very easy to configure as well. Okay, thanks. Um, this question just come in around privacy considerations. So regarding privacy considerations, where is data stored? Vicente, can you answer that one? Sure, yes. The vast majority of our customers um, will choose to uh, be cloud hosted. We use Microsoft Azure Cloud as our uh, as we are Microsoft partners and as Microsoft has one of the largest cloud footprints globally. Microsoft has data centers throughout the world, several in Canada, several in the United States, throughout Europe, throughout Australia, Africa, and so forth. Uh, so the choice of data center would be very much up to the customer if uh, it's typically based wherever the head office or corporate office office would be based. So if the corporate office were in the United States, you can most definitely select any of the uh, Microsoft Azure cloud da data centers in the United States. We do have some customers that prefer on-premise installation. That, that's also possible as well. The vast majority of our customers are currently cloud-based customers. I hope that answers your question. Okay, that's great. Um, another question in, he in here is, can you capture location details, maybe on a map? Well, I take that one. That's an yes, interesting well, one. I, I, I would think what the, it, it probably applies more to the forms, um, because the form can be mobile. So just let me answer that. And um, yeah, the, on the mobile app, we um, provide a, a capture location details, and uh, you'd be able to capture information like that um, when you're filling in forms um, and roaming about. Um, in terms of uh, showing information on the map, yeah, we can do that. Uh, we can incorporate maps into forms. So you saw that there are lots of different data types that we displayed on the form. Well, we, we're including maps in a release that's coming out at the end of July. So. Okay, and then um, one final question we have time for just um, before we wrap up. How do I get data into the H to our IS, if I want to start the project quickly, and how long would that take to get populated? So just enter that's probably one for you. Certainly. Thank you, Olivia. Yeah, basically the data can get into the system in a number of ways. The vast majority of our customers will use our import tool. So the import tool essentially will generate a template, very similar to an Excel template. The data is put into the template. You literally just click on the upload button, and the data is uploaded into the system. That template is intelligent. Uh, it will include uh, unique identifiers for your pick list values, for your history tracking. Any of the configuration that you've done in the system will be reflected in that template to ensure that there is consistency in the data. It can happen rather quickly. Uh, really, the system template can be generated as soon as the configuration is completed, which can be done quite quickly. Um, basically, the main consideration when we're thinking about data is what is the current state of your data. In some cases, we're working with customers, and the data is um, in quite a pristine state. It has been validated and cleansed and updated and so forth. In other cases, it requires requires a little bit more uh, uh, time to pull the data together on the customer side. So we very much work with the customers to provide whatever support they need, and when the data is ready, we can assist them in, uh, in, in guiding them on how to get the data into the template and upload it into the system. The process can actually go quite quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, we're now reaching the end of our webinar time, so we won't be able to answer all, any more questions here. but if your question hasn't been answered, we'll follow up directly with you after the webinar. If at any point you'd like to contact us, please email info at flowformer.com with your query or fill out the contact us form on our website. If you wish to try the latest release of Flowforma for yourself, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial at flowforma.com slash trial. You can also visit the Flowforma or Hubbub website for a list of resources that may be useful to you. 
lastly, I'd just like to let you know that at the end of the webinar, a short survey will pop up on your screens. And if you could take two minutes to fill it out, we'd greatly appreciate your feedback. We really value the responses that we get. So thank you all for attending. I hope you find the content useful. And thank you, Jacinta and Paul, for speaking today.